If you tell a young person so many times over and over again that you're aggressive, you're aggressive, you're aggressive, they will become aggressive. They didn't really understand where I was coming from. And the thing that bothered me was they didn't try to understand. I literally just felt voiceless at the time. I felt a little bit depressed. I said to myself, what's wrong with me? I think our call for compassionate education matters now more than ever because we can't afford to keep on losing people. Shouldn't do that. You don't just never escape someone? No, if you've got a student, you should keep hold of them. I've been excluded like 30 times, easily. The first time I got excluded, I was seven. Wow, seven is really young. Yeah. See, I was writing and the lead of my pencil snapped. So I got up and I took a pencil from the teacher's desk to carry on my work. But um, it was seen as an issue, maybe because I was doing it, but I didn't quite understand. See, I got sent out of class and um, I feel like I had a meltdown. I mean, I think I, I, I got excluded probably around the same age when I was in primary school. Oh, really? Yeah, just like sent up class and like, made to go to a um, separate like, area, particularly during like, like the core classes. It kind of had an impact like, during English. Like, I was always like, disrupted because I found it difficult. Yeah. I found school to be quite oppressive, even as a young person, because um, I was often excluded from school, so um, I think it was because uh, of my um, special educational needs and my um, learning disability. I've always struggled with um, like my actual handwriting, like making it legible, so I always struggled with that. Um, so it kind of was confused as me being, you know, a bit slow to the teacher rather than actually, you know, trying to help me and be patient with me. She was just like, yeah, I can't, I can't deal with it. You're just doing this on purpose. And obviously that back then, that was like back in like, you know, the early 2000s where obviously what the knowledge of, you know, disability wasn't as, you know, as prominent as that now. I think it got to a point where I preferred being at home. So I just asked for, on occasion, six weeks worth of work just to do while I was excluded. And I would do it well before six weeks. So I just ended up having to watch Murder, She Wrote all the time. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I used to watch that as well. Yeah. <laughs> when I got excluded, I used to watch Murder, She Wrote as well. That kept me going. First time I got excluded was in year seven. So I was like 11 years old. And I think the same as well, just in terms of I was something different they never experienced before and they just, yeah, same reason, just sought to exclude me and keep me out of class. And that's why in year 78 I was excluded a lot of times because I, could, I didn't know how to, you know, adjust to the system and they just thought I was someone special in it. So, yeah, that was my early experiences. Mm. I felt school, my experience of it was they didn't really understand where I was coming from. And the thing that bothered me was they didn't try to understand ever if I was dealing with mental health issues, when I was dealing with mental health issues, they didn't do anything to help. They didn't offer me support, counsellor, therapist, nothing. That's a bit 
crazy and that's sad to kind of know because yeah I feel like some people have the experience of school where they just don't care about the young people it's more about just getting the work out and that kind of makes you question the intentions of the school and if they actually really care for the children. I feel like they just kind of put everything into one, one, one heap, one category as bad behaviour, whether it's learning difficulties or just, you know, being unable to express yourself, you know, in the, in the appropriate way. Yeah, exactly. And really and truly, what is the appropriate way? Yeah, systems just to, like, the school system is very rigid, like, so rigid, like, there's not really much room for, like, expression. The most of the problems were obviously I was dyslexic and never knew that until I was in second year. So when I was saying that's moving or that's shaking, they would they would always say, ha ha, he's on drugs, and then I would get in my hassle and stuff like that. It was it was hard. It was always hard because I would like, come home and it would always be, oh, he's just been bad again. Do you feel like the teachers understood you, or do you feel like there was anything that you know you had at that time that the teachers didn't understand or tried to? Misunderstood in any way, kind of thing. No, the teachers didn't try to understand. They only tried to understand their way of thinking. They didn't understand my way of thinking. Sometimes it was my fault. Sometimes I would, I would be just asking the teacher, "Can you say a question again?" And I would say it again, and again, and again. The teacher, I think, I would take the mickey. I felt quite angry, quite frustrated, but at the same time, I, I felt quite down. Like I felt a bit depressed. I'd say to myself, "What's wrong with me?" You know what I mean, they don't think about the long-term yeah. effect. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And teachers don't realise that our lives are basically in their hands. Mm -hmm. All it takes is for them to just exclude us or to speak to us badly or to be, I don't know, just put us down all the time. All it takes is that to just ruin us. If I was in the classroom and because I got ADHD, like mm -hmm. certain times I would need to move, yeah. they would see it as me causing a problem. Mm -hmm. I would explain to them how it affects me. They just see it as an excuse. Oh, Stefan, you're making an excuse. You just want to get up and go somewhere where you shouldn't be. Mm. So, like, I really think there's a difference between teachers and people that just come to work just to get paid. Because if you're coming to work to just get paid, then you're not going to care about the job itself. 100%. A teacher teaches a child no matter what way he learns schools are forgetting that we're not just there academically this is where we spend the majority of our time and we should be able to grow as a person if you tell a young person over and over again that you're aggressive you're aggressive you're aggressive they will become aggressive if you tell them over and over again that you're a leader or you can do this or you can do that they will start to believe it in themselves you have to be very careful with the words you use with young people because it's so impressionable that they will become what you say and then you find people like struggling further down the line, like trying to get into university, not being able to go to the university you want to go to just because of a situation. Just simply as a minority, we have to work harder. It's a known fact, you know, like there's a stigma around it, but it's a fact. You have to work harder to get to where you want to be in life. As women, you have to work harder to get to where you want to be in life. So just not getting that extra boost or that boost of confidence while you're in school or that extra support, it will just make other things more difficult. Growing up from a kind of minority background, you're made to feel as though you should be grateful for services that you receive that you're actually entitled to. We're all entitled to an education. Do you know what I mean? So no, you shouldn't be made to feel grateful for somebody doing their job. Was there ever one teacher that's ever been there for you? Or have well, you... I think, like I always say, like, I think when I got to university, that's when I proper got help. But within secondary school, I say teachers that kind of maybe were in the local area, maybe like teacher assistants. So some of them even saw like some teachers speaking negative towards me, like, Jonathan, you're not going to do this. Not gonna... I remember one time where a teacher said something like, Jonathan's never going to let's say, become this and that. And then I remember my English teacher at the time, she came to me and said, Jonathan, don't let anyone say that to you. You know, you can do anything. See, I haven't forgot that till today because she just took maybe three minutes out of her time just to say, Jonathan, don't let anyone say that to you. There just needs to be a massive cultural change in the training um, around teachers. There needs to be more funding in like SEN departments, mental health support, um, support for like pastoral care, 
um, support in the classroom for teachers because I get like a teacher's job is not easy. I get it. The thing that um, the girl said about um, the SEN department is really true because um, my brother has autism and ADHD and when he was misbehaving in class and everything, they always used to send him out, send him home and it took five years for them to diagnose him. So you can imagine he wasn't even like getting the right help that he needed. He was just being classified as a bad child. It took ages before they could then move him to a special school. But if you think about it, a lot of these kids don't go to special schools. And that's kind of like an example of the system failing children. He was getting excluded from year four. So imagine going into secondary school. Like your whole perspective of teachers will just be so low because you just don't understand how you could be treated that way for having a need that it's not your fault. Yeah. Like autism, like, you just have that. You don't have a choice. Like that is how you are, and being like downgraded because of that's that's how you are. It's just like the worst thing ever. The classroom environment in itself was very hostile towards me, um, which is why I felt like the exclusion was highly unfair because. I think I got punished on my reaction to the hostility rather than them trying to come to an understanding as to why I was acting where I was acting. I remember when I started um, at my new um, secondary school and the, um, I had a TR and he gave me the wrong timetable and because I was going to my right lessons he put me on report and made me have to go and see him every day so at the end of every day you have to get him to sign it and i took it but i never went to him and then because of that he put me on isolation and because i wasn't going to the isolation he started giving me the weekend um detentions and it was just like never ending like my mom didn't understand the whole thing like no one understood like there's just no one you could go to to get to be on the same page with you and understand like you are the one that made the mistake. You gave me the wrong timetable. I was new. I was going to my right lessons so I could get my, my grades for my right classes. You made the mistake, but I'm the one being punished. It's just always their right. It's never, maybe the young person is right. Yeah. My brother's exclusion affected me more than my own exclusion. He had troubles, the troubles came to our door. It affected my education because instead of going to college, I was staying home to make sure that when these people knocked, nothing bad was going to happen and stuff like that. But then that also led down to him being more involved with like police and stuff, which meant I had to be more involved, which then in the end resulted in there being an argument, which meant I became homeless. When I was school for three weeks, uh, I'll just be in the streets, yeah. parks, like places where you shouldn't be and seeing people who you shouldn't be at that time because if you're not in school, where else are you going to be? And what, what, what teachers don't know that leads the groomers, because groomers wait for kids outside school, yeah. outside school and wait for them to get kicked out and that's what they prey on. So you say you made new friends outside school? Yeah. You said it, the wrong friends? The wrong friends. Mm. And that's because you got excluded from school? Yeah, it was because I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So yeah. I should have been at school. Yeah. Should have been learning. I should have been doing what I should have been, I needed to do, but I didn't have the chance to. I think a compassionate education system, it would look a bit like a kid can go into a school and you can feel safe in 
talking about his problems to whoever he can talk to. He can feel safe in knowing that he's not going to be judged, he's not going to be labelled. Excluding would be the last thing I would do. I would find out the whole story. I would have them in the classroom, take them out that period, let them calm down, let them do the work in the school, and then if they're settled down and the problem's resolved, then send them back to class. Education should be more inclusive for everyone, and um, students that need more support should be given more support before alternative provision. With young people, like, I don't think young people are hard. I think if you can find the right way to speak to them and the right way to express your caring for them, they, they will actually like, comply. Yeah. Just having basic empathy like for the young person, um, trying to understand why they're acting like that because, as you said, there's always something else to it. Like Further training uh, needs to be put in place for these teachers, do you know what I mean? And maybe just listening to young people and kind of getting their perspective on how they feel the school should be run or they should be dealt with as young people. It's going to be complex, a very complex issue and we have to look at pastoral support and we have to look at teacher training and we do have to look at resources but I think the main thing that's easy to do is just talk to a kid, see where they're coming from because these teachers, a lot of them can't really see our struggle and it's not their fault but I think they should try and make a conscious effort to see where we're from and see what problems we have to deal with and it can start from there. Teachers just need to look at the young people they're teaching um, from an empathetic point of view as humans, not as just a caseload or a file or just another disruptive student. They need to kind of just use their brain and their common sense to understand where what's what might be happening with these young people or um, yeah, why they might be seen as disruptive. To be respected is asking the bare minimum. To be cared for is asking the bare minimum. Um, I think that when employing teachers, mm -hmm. the expectations need to be high because I don't think it's possible for a teacher who doesn't have a caring heart or a caring mind to just be a teacher. I don't think all it takes is a degree 